Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. And we're back. In a historic move, the Bells of Rebbe announced the establishment of a new organization for former Haredim, both those who maintain a religious lifestyle and those who are not religious. The new organization, which is not a cure of group, it's been dubbed Ahava Kedumim, it serves to maintain the connection to these people, deal with their concerns, and help them keep associated with their families. We're going live to Israel right now, and Shmili Feiner joined. He was a former member of the Bells of Hasidim, no longer part of the group, but he's embracing the new initiative of the Bells of Rebbe. Shmili Feiner, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Shavuot Tov. Well, good morning to you in Israel. Yes. So tell tell us about yourself. You grew up as part of the Bozo Hasidic community. Tell us about your growing up and uh, where you were. Then we'll look for where you are today. Um, so basically, I I grew up uh, in Bells and uh, in the Haida and uh, the Yeshiva. And uh, I basically, I left bells around when I was 17 years old so basically my whole growing up life I was I was raised in bells um, and then and then in, uh, when I was 17 18 ish I uh, I left I know you know it, it wasn't in one day I left bells uh, it took me like a, a year or two and then I joined the army and I started my own life and so, you saw, did, did you still maintain connections to the Belgian community? Did you maintain relations with your family? How did they take the fact that you joined the army? You weren't part of the community anymore. Oh, uh, basically, my family, uh, my family wasn't really, uh, they wasn't happy about that, obviously. But uh, they they didn't uh, like uh, throw me out of the house or whatever. They they they. Uh, they still gave me love, and and I, I still I was still part of the family. And about your question about the the community about bells, I wasn't really in touch with anyone until this organization started. Like no friends, no, just my family. My my but family. You, did you have friends while you were the seventeen years? You must have had friends in the community. Oh yeah, I had friends, but I, I wasn't really uh, in touch with them. I don't know, like you know, life. I di I didn't. No one like was against me, or no one. Uh, just the the whole uh, process of life, you know. No one uh, was was trying really to call me and uh, be in touch with me. And uh, you know, when you when I when I joined the army, so I switched phones and whatever. So I wasn't really in touch with anyone. You wanted to you wanted to cut off relations, I guess, with your former life. You were looking to a new life. Uh, not on purpose. I mean, it wasn't really. I didn't think about it. It just happened. Now you have brothers and sisters. Yeah, I actually have a, a brother that wasn't on this uh, masa as well. And an older, younger one. Uh, younger. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm the behold. And so he followed in your footsteps. Uh, you can say that, yeah. Okay. So you have to. So now you left the community. So mm -hmm. now tell us what I found amazing, and I know the Bells of Rebbe has been very. Uh, he's been very, I think, innovative. First of all, he has a television station in Israel, which is popular, which, which is a Tzadik and now. Yeah. Um, I understand he has this new initiative that I mentioned about a new organization for former Haredim, which is not a cure. He's not looking to get you back, but he's looking to maintain a connection with that. So, how did you hear about it? And tell us about the organization. How did this whole How did this whole organization come about? As far as what you know. Okay, so I can tell you from my experience. Um, basically, like around uh, six or seven months ago uh someone can uh, contact me and it was like uh i want to talk to you about something about uh, someone wants to regroup uh um I, he didn't say anything about uh, the bells of Rebbe or whatever he said just the one who submits me okay uh so okay whatever so i met him in a coffee 
Oh, on a coffee, yeah. And uh, then he, he he said he started to say the old details. The the Belza Rebbe wants to uh, do an organization uh, and uh, to we group all the people that left uh, Bells. Uh, um, and um, I will tell you what I felt in the beginning. I I wasn't I wasn't really I didn't really believe. I was very very. Uh, uh, skeptical about that. Um, I can tell you that me and I, we went there like around like 30, 30 people, something like that. Most of us we didn't uh, we didn't believe until we were actually there. When we saw actually that the whole purpose of this organization is not so to Marcel Bechivizan, it's not like it's it's just to to reconnect with us, to help us and uh, everything we're going through in life. And uh, from my opinion, it's amazing. And in our, so in our, you found they weren't looking to get you back to become a Belzer Chas, so they just wanted to maintain a relationship with you. Just to give love. That's it. That's it. And from what I understand, the, the, what triggered the, the Belzer Rebbe found this organization Involved a tragic case where a former member of the Boza community took his own life after his parents and the community broke off relations with him, and that triggered the establishment of the organization. As the Rebbe understood, that breaking off relations is not the solution of those who leave religious practices and embark on a new path. Do you have is there you have any idea how many people left the Boza Hasidus and, and part of this new organization? Um I don't really know the number, but uh, I, I mean, the all organization started just in uh, the people that left uh, the, the Belzer com community in Israel. Obviously, there is a lot of uh, Belzer communities around the world. Uh, I, I don't know how much uh, there is uh, in, a, in, our, in all around the world, but uh, and basically, and also, I wanna I wanna comment on the first thing you said. Uh, the trigger uh, uh, that people are saying about uh, the the Belzer Hussi that took his life. For, uh, I don't know anything about it. This was the trigger to to uh, on this so starting on this organization. But uh, this is what people say. But uh, I don't know anything about it, so I can't really say anything about it. So I'm just reporting what the media or the news reports had about it. So I, I know, I know, but uh, I don't. I, I don't think this is the the, the reason. Uh, that's it. So explain to me. So how often do you get together? Are you form relationships with some of the former Hasidim of the Belza community? When you say they're not looking to carve you to get you back to become a bells of Chassid, so what do you do when you get together? Uh, so what do we do? Um, basically, we, the first thing we did that we went to Europe, right? We went to uh, the, the the first thing that the uh, the bells of Rabbi wanted like to get us together and to connect each other, like the whole group. So we 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 went to. To Europe, the, the first couple of days we, we just connected uh, to each other. We went uh, to Prague, then we went to to Poland, and we went to uh, to a lot of uh, traditional uh, uh, Jewish places, and, uh, uh, and we and we did a lot of um, of uh, singing and talking, and you know, to but connect. They, was there was there davening, for example? Was there? Um, no, I, I'm just I trying to handle what what the religious environment was like. Okay, so the uh, the religious environment was like that. Whoever wanted to daven, he davened. There was no forcing nothing. Like I tell you from my experience, I, no one was forcing me to like. Uh, okay, good morning. Put on film. I must get an yeshiva. It wasn't like that. No, not at all. It was like whoever wants daven, daven. They did minyunim. I mean, if whoever wants to daven, daven. But they didn't force anything. Um, and uh, on Shabbos, we went to to Belt, to you know the the town, the village. The town. 
yeah so the the reason we went there was the the belzer rabbi uh, wanted to uh want us to 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 connect to the you know to the to, to the first of the first of the of the belza tradition and what and was for us it was amazing it wasn't in a religious way just to connect to the nashuma you know um um it was uh, for me it was very, very it was amazing and how many people are part of the initiative or you were how many people went with you to europe what do you have other activities that are taking place i'm just trying to get a handle as to how many people are involved um how many people were, I, mean, I think around 50 people something like that and how often do you get together with the group so after we went back um um one of the of the people that the the Belzer rabbi uh, called in from the beginning to start this uh, old organization so he went to the Belzer rabbi after uh, a week or something like that and he he, sh he showed them pictures and everything in uh, told them about all the all, all the things that we did and everything and then the Belzer rabbi said uh what what about the, to continue this whole thing? So so uh, he said, uh, I want I want you now to like to organize a, again uh, something here in Israel to regroup this whole group and uh, it basically wanted like to, this this to be like uh, something just not one time thing, you know. So uh, after uh, two weeks we regrouped together. We we did uh, a dinner together. Um, everyone talked about all all the all the feelings that he had of all of all this uh, um, thing that we went to Europe and uh, and, and now we, we are talking basically every day and, and whoever needs some help or something with anything in life um, yeah, they help help, it, help help each other so. So, which is interesting. Now, where are you on the on the religious scale today? Because I know you said you left, you became the army. Are you religious at all? Traditional? How would you describe yourself? I'm. I'm. I don't like. I don't really like titles. But uh, on the on the if if people will ask me, I will say I'm 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 traditional. You know, I'm I'm a good Jew. <laughs> oh, nobody says you're not a good Jew. About just one, because you came from one lifestyle. And obviously, you're not living that lifestyle you grew up to in the first 17 years of your life. Yeah. Now, have you ever met the Belzer Rebbe? If I ever met the Belzer Rebbe, yeah, I met him, but not, not, not uh, on my, on my new look. Not really. Uh -huh. Now I'm just curious: Are there any plans for the Bells of Rebbe to get together with members such as yourself, who former members who are now part of this new organization? Um, I think I think so. I don't really know, but I, I'm I hope so. I really want to. And do you ever envision yourself going back to becoming Hasidish to be part, whether it's Bells or any other group? Is that part uh, of your? I, I don't think so, no. No. But you're happy just to maintain the connections, the relationship, not just with yeah. your Nice to see your family still connects with you, but other members yeah. of the community. Yeah, yeah. Now, has this organization opened the door where you can even get together with some of your old friends that are still part of the community? Um... I, I don't... I, I don't really know, but I... I don't think it's gonna be an issue if I want to. Like I didn't really try, but uh -huh. no, it just seemed that there's an opening of the door, and it's, it's a healthy thing where you're not being shunned, and other members who left not being shunned, they're embraced and saying, even though you're not living the lifestyle that you grew up with, we still want to, we still love you, and we still want you to be part of us, and we want to be part of you. Yeah, yeah. Basically, this is this is the whole goal of this organization. Did it surprise you? Uh. And yeah, it's a it's a special thing. I I think it's it's something that wasn't. Uh, I I think it's the first time that uh, a, a rabbi of a big community in 
and and the Haredish uh, community that is doing us a, a thing like that. So of course it surprised me. Anyway, uh, Shmuel, fine. Thank you for being with us. Continued. You know, I hope yeah. that the relationships grow and prosper. And thank you for sharing that with us. We appreciate it. Oh, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you. My pleasure. Shmuel, Shmuel Lafina here on the Talkline Network. Okay, that's about all the time we have for tonight. Stay tuned next for Alan Dershowitz talking about Don.